Today I'm going to show you how to put a ruffle on a quilt. You can also do prairie points, this very same method. This is a ruffle quilt that I made and I put it on the, uh, the quilt with the piping hot binding method. You wouldn't have to use the piping hot binding method. One thing you do need to do to make sure of is that you cut this on the bias though if you're going to use uh, the curve type of corner. Today I'm going to put this same method on a little quilt that I've made that we're going to put prairie points on. So whether it's prairie points or it's piping hot binding, it doesn't really matter. Get this here. Okay, here's my quilt and here's my prairie points. On the prairie points, you want to decide which side you want them on. This quilt will not be cut with the corners, so I'm not going to bother to use bias. I'm just going to use straight. So I want the green on the top of my quilt, just like this. So the first thing I'm going to do is attach the ruffle or the prairie points first before I start with the binding. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to lay it on top of the back side of the quilt, just like this, and start sewing. With the prairie points, you always have more than enough on here, the length, so that you can decide which one you want to start with. And on this particular one, I want to start right here. So I'm going to put it in just about an inch. On this, I'm just using a quarter inch foot. Of course, if you have a foff, you want to use your dual feed. If you don't have a foff, you'll want to use a walking foot. And I'm not going to use this guy, so I'm just going to lay him up like that. We're going to cut him off. Okay, what we've just done is sewn the, the prairie points on the back of the quilt, so that this would be the very same as what we would do with the ruffle. Now we're going to turn it over to the front so that you can see what we're going to get here, the, the effect. Now what we're going to do next is to put the binding on. And this is piping hot binding. I've shown that in an earlier video. And I've done that before. I did this with a quarter inch seam. I'm going to sew this right on top of it with a quarter inch seam too. Maybe a thread or more to the left, just to make sure that I've covered up that seam. So as you can see, I've got just a little bit there. Now I didn't cut my binding as big as I normally cut it. I cut it two inches. And this gets a little bulky now that I've got the prairie points and the binding. And I've got a minky back, which makes it even more bulky. If you have a, a dual feed like a cloth, you won't have any trouble with it. So what we've done is we've sewn the binding with the piping right along on top of the prairie points on the backing side. Now all we have to do is turn this over. And we want to turn it over to where the prairie points stick out. So we have binding on one side and not on the other. I'm putting it on the front because I want to show off the piping binding. But you do not have to do that if you just want to put binding and, and turn it to the back, that's fine. 
but I like the binding to be another design element. Okay. You can also hand slip stitch this down. We're going to change now to the nylon thread. I like to use YLI when I'm using the piping binding method. your binding foot, you don't use a dual feed. So I'll take off my foot, release the dual feed. The thing that helps with the piping foot is that it actually puts the recording in a little slot. So I always use this piping foot. I can hardly see it. It really is invisible. All right, so what I'm going to do is just roll this where that, that little cording goes right to the left of that mark, the red mark. Now, if we're doing the ruffle, and this is all on the bias, you can easily go around the curve. In one of my videos in the future, I'll show you how to use the curry points, because they're a lot of fun. I've done them a lot in baby quilts. They'd also be good in patriotic or Christmas quilts, too. That's how it looks. Pretty nice, huh?